Almighty Yahweh promises to gather everyone he scattered. I am a Hebrew. We are Hebrews. I was born in Texas. I am a Hebrew and I am from Florida. I'm a Hebrew and I was born in California. I am a Hebrew and I was born in San Diego, California. I'm a Hebrew. I was born in Indiana. I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I am a Hebrew and I was born in Spain. I am a Hebrew from West Africa, Liberia. I am a Hebrew, and I was born in Straight Lane. We are Hebrews. I will make this Shalom, shalom, daughters of Zion. Hallelujah. May the peace and cleansing of Yom Kippur be upon you as we enter into Yom Kippur tonight on tonight's show. We bless you, sisters. Sister Ashley here, Mother Bullock by my side, and Sister Jennifer there in Georgia. We hope that you enjoy anything we may say tonight. We'll see how it goes. Bless you, Sister Jennifer. If you can hear me, say on and give us a uh, a shout out, please, or at least let us hear you for a, a sound check. Yes, ma'am. Shalom, shalom to you all, Daughters of Zion. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Sister to Sister as we uh, prepare our hearts to enter into the Day of Atonement. It's just such an honor to be able to be here with you all. Um, You know, it's an honor to no longer be in the world, but to actually walk in the righteousness of Yah and to have this opportunity. So it's not something that we take lightly. Again, my name is Sister Jennifer, and I am with Straightway Georgia, and I am the wife of Elder Rufus. Um, I pray you can all hear me. I pray I've talked enough to actually give an adequate sound check. Can you hear me on your end, Sister Ashley? 
Hallelujah. I see a 10. And yes, ma'am, I hear you very loud and clear. Let's go to Mother Bullard. Please give any acknowledgments or anything on your heart, Mother. Hallelujah. It's been so good to have you these past few shows. So welcome back. Shalom, shalom, <laughs> shalom to all the daughters of Zion. And shalom to my pastor. Hallelujah. A great pastor, a great man of Yah. And I just thank the Father for him. Thank the Father for Mother Carol. As I, as I had a, I'm having a beautiful stay here. I said, oh, it's so nice and peaceful here. I'm really enjoying myself. And I just shout out to all the mothers of Zion and all the sisters of Zion. Just love you. Hallelujah. We love you, Mother. Bless you. Sister Jennifer, any acknowledgments from you? Yes, ma'am. Um, First and foremost, I just want to acknowledge the Most High for uh, his mercy and for the blood of the Messiah um, to atone for my sins. And it really is such an honor to be in a position of pursuing holiness and righteousness and being able to partake in his feast and um, reflect on his sacrifices and what true marriage really is. I want to acknowledge my head, Elder Rufus, who brought me into the way and um, taught me how to keep Yah's commandments and how to grow um, every day in holy fear, even now. And I just want to uh, finally acknowledge Pastor Dow for being the righteous leader that the Father led us to in 2011. Um, you know, in, in his life, we've seen nothing but uh, growth and righteousness and faithfulness, and, and the fruit of that is really shown in the growth of this ministry. And there's so much sacrifice given, and it truly does not go unnoticed one bit. So that's all I have, Sister Ashley. Bless you. I thank y'all as well, my sisters, uh, for his enduring love. You know, I always say his enduring mm -hmm. love because it, he endures me so, so much. Uh, but I thank him for his blood because it should have been me what they did to him. Impaled him, mocked him, he bled, he died to set us free. And I've been guilty of uh, the sins that he atoned for, the things that he uh, bare upon himself. Um, I thank him for the women. You know, he said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. That's what he said, said in some of his uh, dying or last statements here on earth. But I thank him for a sound mind. I thank him for a care for his people, uh, you know, a real care, because I do have it. And the care that I have for, for my own soul, you know, I thank him for sincerity. I thank him for getting out of me all things that offend so that I may enter into life. I pray to stand. I pray all of you stand. But I thank you, Father, for your blood. I thank him for this day as we enter into Yom Kippur. Um, I thank him for the legendary Pastor Dow. Hallelujah. There's really no other word you could use. Honorable, yes, um, many adjectives you could put before him, but the legendary Pastor Dow that leads us all, uh, doing such a great job leading us. I thank him for gathering all his people together, building up righteous marriages. I thank him for um, my own marriage that he uh, was so beneficial in putting together and making sure it was successful. I thank him. Uh, thank you, Deacon. Hallelujah for all that you do behind the scenes. I thank uh, Grandma Barb who often, and I've said her name many times before at the introduction of a show because she helps me behind the scenes. If I if I need to rely on a source in her library, an old preaching, a newsletter, a book, uh, some scriptures, whatever it is, I can go to her and I know she's got it and she keeps all that and it's so valuable. Her library is so valuable and I really want to thank her um, because she does things for me um, for the show. Um, so let's go to uh, you, Sister Jennifer, with any announcements before we get going tonight. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just have a couple of things. First and foremost, I just want <clears throat> to send a special uh, thank you to everyone that contributed um, in the midst of the passing of our beloved elder, Elder Felix. You know, it, it really is an honor to be in a ministry where you can give and know beyond the shadow of a doubt that the funds are and the resources will be used for exactly what was said. Um, so, you know, again, our beloved Elder Felix, we will miss him dearly. Please keep Sister Melissa and um, her family in your prayers. Um, so that's all I have on that end. And um, I also want to go over the, the, ble the Be a Blessing list. Did you want to add anything before I went on to that, Sister Ashley? 
for Sister Melissa, yes, just as I had requested last week, um, it's something that, that uh, I kind of, uh, of course, went through the proper chains of authority to, to instigate or to start, but I really hope that some of you can reach into your closets or stop by a store and grab them something, but you know her children are, um, you got 4T, of course, 5T uh, for, the, for her boy, and 6 is the size for her girl. And, you know, books and markers and crayons and just fun stuff. I'm sure you got something that you can contribute to her. I, I would appreciate it greatly. I know she would. It would help so much. And it's something that we wanted to do um, prior to his passing. So even the more so now, if you can contribute, we're going to box up that stuff. And Brother Steve on the East Coast is more than willing to take what we have um, to her and to her family. So um, let's just continue to give if we're able. I really appreciate that. And uh, but and, and remember Judah's closet. So if you have something that you want to share with the sisters that no longer fits you, uh, something that, of course, is well-maintained, taken care of, and you just want to share, Judah's closet is open. And we thank Sister Charmaine for heading that up every year at Tabernacle so that some of you get um, blessed with garments and, and things. So um, please be, be a blessing is is next on the list, so let's knock it out. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to um, just say one thing before I do that. You know, when you give, um, when you're um, giving things to um, Elder Felix's family, I want you all to actually give something that you would love to receive. So when you give, don't give on your own terms, your own conditions. Give something that uh, would really be a blessing, not something that, um, you know, well, I just don't use this anymore or something that is torn or can be thrown away. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm hoping Israel wouldn't do that, but just really have in mind when you give that you give according to the way that Yah would give. Um, we know that he loves a cheerful giver. Uh, so just make sure that you're actually giving something that uh, would be a blessing to that family. Um, that's all I wanted to add. And next I'm going to go on to the Be a Blessing list. And, and this pretty much is the the same, um, you know, the same thing. Um, this list that I'm about to read, it's a, um, we, we've called it Be a Blessing list. This is a list of items or this is an idea that Elder Rufus started a few years ago. And um, the purpose of this is when we come together on the land at Straightway for a feast, there's a lot of money that's actually put out um, a lot of money that's spent to host the saints. And when we leave, we don't want to um, leave, you know, the, the land in a, a depleted state at all. So we want to make sure that we come and we bring things that can be used for, for us. This is not for straightway. This is for us. So make sure that um, you buy good quality products, good quality items. Um, some of the items specifically have name brands on it. So if I have noted a name brand here, then please get that particular name brand. Um, don't go for the cheap stuff because we need something that will last. And finally, contact the dining hall to let them know what you plan to bring. Um, this list is actually updated, so it's a little different than what I've announced last week. So contact the dining hall and let them know what um, you're bringing so that they can look and see what they have an abundance of already and what they are still in need of. Um, and some of the items as well, call the dining hall and you can ask for specific uh, brands that is needed. So first item on the list, I have napkins, napkins. Second item, I have plates. And you can contact the dining hall for the specific type, just like I mentioned before. Next, I have bowls. Plates and bowls, these are styrofoam. Styrofoam plates, styrofoam bowls. Next, I have styrofoam 12-ounce drinking cups and 8-ounce styrofoam drinking cups. Next, I have plastic forks and plastic spoons. We do not need plastic knives. So if you buy an assortment, it's going to include knives, but we do not need plastic knives. So we need plastic forks and plastic spoons. Next, I have Dawn dish detergent, Dawn dish detergent. Next, I have regular paper towels. So we're good on Viva. We no longer need any more Viva. We need regular paper towels. Next, I have um, heavy-duty foil and plastic wrap. Heavy-duty foil and plastic wrap. Please make sure that both of these are heavy-duty. Next, um, I have Kleenex. 
three-pack or larger Kleenex. Next, I have 13-gallon white trash bags. 13-gallon white trash bags. Next, I have 42-gallon contractor trash bags. Make sure the, the box says contractor trash bag, 42-gallon contractor trash bag. There's a difference between a regular 42-gallon trash bag and a contractor trash bag. So make sure it says contractor. Next, I have one-gallon Ziploc bags. Next, I have two-gallon Ziploc bags. So one-gallon and two-gallon Ziploc bags. Next, I have Tide and Arm & Hammer washing detergent. Tide and Arm & Hammer washing detergent. Next, I have white basmati rice and jasmine rice. So white basmati rice and jasmine rice. Next, I have coffee. That can be any name brand, any name brand coffee. Next, I have hot cocoa packets with no marshmallows. Hot cocoa packets with no marshmallows. And then I have honey. If you can get local honey, that would be great. Honey and red beans. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, um, you can contact the dining hall again. There's a, a video that was put out last week with the old list on Straightway Help Meets. Um, so we've uh, taken off the Viva paper towels because we no longer need that. And we've added eight ounce drinking cups. We've added honey and we've added red beans. Other than that, the list on YouTube, Straightway Help Meets, is um is pretty much the same if you just take those uh those few omissions and add in the things that I've added. So Mr. Ashley, did you want to add anything? I want to say um what to bring for your garments or your apparel or what to wear. Their nights if they stay stay or remain the same, it's chilly, it's in the fifties, um, but it's very comfortable. And our days have been hot. Uh not not too too hot, not Texas hot or Florida hot, but you know, high eighties. Um, so it's drastic temperature differences. Okay, so layer up or be ready. Bring your blankets and those kind of things. We did have a um, a video also on help me that will kind of help you um, with packing, with what to bring. Many different sisters said many different things. So if you watch that video, I'm sure something's going to stand out. So uh, one thing that is also important is please don't inconvenience us. With so many people coming to the land. Um, you don't want to leave a bad taste in the saint's mouth with your presence or your needs or your demands. And we are very hospitable. We would never treat you unkindly. Um, but at the same time, please know that there's so many people and everyone cannot have everything that they want. So our laundry room is closed. Um, we do not even wash laundry if you live here. Um, the only thing that you may see get washed is the kitchen towels that are continually being used. Um, daily, we have often opened the laundry room for that. Um, but please consider that we can't have everyone washing. So because everyone can't, we don't because we are together. We're a unit. We're us. A special thank you to Mother Vanessa for her presence. Uh, she bought. Uh, she brought a lot of excitement to the land. And if she's listening, bless you. And I had a really awesome uh, announcement too. There's a, uh, you've heard him, maybe, if you've been listening to us long enough, Dr. William Luck. He's a, uh, I believe he's retired now, but he's a reverend, a doctor, um, a former professor of Bible and theology. So that's cool, from the Moody Bible Institute. So all that doesn't really matter to you, but he's a very educated man. Um, if you've ever seen his videos or heard him talk or read any of his um, his books, pamphlets, and things that he puts out, he's very knowledgeable, very kind. Um, but he's developed a relationship with with a pastor or even the ministry enough to to dedicate his recent book to Pastor Dow. And I think that's very honorable. So he has just written a book about Hebrews, and I'm sure in the near future you, you'll see uh, maybe Pastor um, show it, promote it, read it. If not, you can follow Do Dr. William Luck. But um, someone that has not even met Pastor but a lover of the truth that he presents. And, you know, he's been invited to teach all over the world, this man. I'm talking about William Lux. He is very educated, you know, master in uh, religion, master degree in religion, a master in divinity. Um, so very highly educated. I can't, I can't say that enough because by the time you went through all these schools and then you acknowledge the truth, 
and then you dedicate a book to the truth and to the man who has um, inspired you, Pastor Dow, um, I really, really think that's honorable. What do you think about that, Jennifer? It is very honorable. Um, You know, it's just another way that shows that your gift will make room for you. And um, I was really um, amazed at the fact that, you know, Pastor shared about, you know, he shared his testimony, how he came to the Most High, how he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But when he, he shared that he had received a um, a phone call from an old friend who was actually there and experienced, um, you know, his experience with the Holy Spirit, and for that man to still remember that moment years later, I mean, it, it just lets you know that, you know, our pastor truly is walking in in high levels of righteousness and holiness. And this is just something that is just not duplicated in any other ministry. So it's just another thing on the list that sets us apart and separates us from, you know, these other ministries, the GOCC, IUIC, whomever it may be. So, you know, when they come with these um, these attacks and these um, accusations, whatever you want to call them, it's really out of envy and jealousy. Um, so, you know, our pastor has, his gift is definitely making room for him. And, you know, we have no uh, hesitation, no doubts in following him at all. So it definitely is an honor. Hallelujah. What do you think about that, Mother? What an honor. What an honor. Just to think about a man with that much education, you know, and see the holiness and the righteousness in our pastor. And, you know, he knows he's speaking truth. Because a lot of times when people get that much education, they want to stay with that education. They don't want to turn, you know, the pride won't let them turn. But with him, that's that's wonderful. Then he acknowledged my pastor and also dedicate a book to him. That's awesome. Right, and to come from that educational background, you you got to know Christianity is woven Ooh, in and out of that yes. education. Yeah, you know, very much. Divinity school. Very much. So, hallelujah. You know, to dedicate a book is basically putting a message at the beginning of a book saying, hey, this is written and being performed because of you or for you or to express affection towards a person that you're acknowledging. So it really is a high honor, and um, it's received with much humility. So tomorrow, my last announcement, tomorrow, 11 a.m., we will assemble here, and you can watch us live. Um, We don't have half the amount of uh, listeners tonight as we normally do. Maybe they'll straggle in. As Mother said, maybe everyone's preparing because we do have two Sabbaths. We have a high Sabbath today, or tonight starts, and then the Shabbat. So I know everyone's kind of rushing around, getting getting together what they need. You probably got, if you're Central Standard Time, an hour to drink some water. If you hadn't today, maybe I'm helping some of you out. Go grab some. If it's your first fast without water, you don't want a headache. If you get a headache, you'll be all right. You'll make it through. But you'll, you'll know next time uh, you should have drank some water. Um, so let's get into our talk or our conversation. Anything from you before before we just go that way, Jennifer? No, ma'am. I'm ready to go. All right. So we were listening to uh, Shabbat message, and all of us, we're all in here. It's live. And uh pastor was saying uh, various things, really. He just talked about a whole variety of things, as he always does. And he just said, hey, that'd be a good uh, sister, sister blog talk, all right? So, um he was talking about James 4.11. He was talking about Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Um, he was talking about the tongue. He was talking about judging the law. He was talking about a lot of different things. So um, I needed to go back and get more of a direction and at the same time cover any direction that we needed to go and not just stay limited to one area because he had such a variety presented before us. But blessed is the man to whom Yahweh imputes no crookedness. And in whose spirit there is no guile. That's where we start tonight. In whose spirit there is no deceit. That's what that means. Blessed is the man in whose spirit there is no deceit. Okay? So keep your tongue from evil. And keep your lips from speaking guile. Remember, guile is deceiving. So to speak guile would be in the sense of deceiving someone that is listening or hearing you. All right, and Peter gives us instruction, if you want to love life and if you want to see good days, refrain your tongue from evil and refrain your lips from speaking guile. 
So no trickery in you, no subtlety in you, no underlying uh, reason for saying what you're saying. Just state the facts, state the truth, or hold your tongue. And Second Peter also says it, it speaks of our Messiah, our perfect Messiah, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. That's why he can atone for all of us. So I, I take us all back first just to get conversation going. Because my mother and I and Jennifer have not had the chance. We we often like it that way, you know, just whatever the Father uh, wants to say through us or, or you know, et cetera, et cetera. We don't always, we don't come together and, and take that opportunity to chat to one another. So for me to just introduce, let's go back to the fall. Let's start there because Genesis 3.1 tells you the serpent was more guile than any beast that Yahweh had made. But the cunning serpent has said, y'all know the story, but listen, because you can always hear something new. Hey, woman, Hawa, Eve, did Yah say you can't eat of every tree of the garden? The woman says, we can eat of the fruit of the trees of this garden. There's just one that we can't eat or touch. Because if we eat or touch the one right there in the middle, in the midst, we will die. So this conversation is going on and on, and I know I'm sure it's not all written down. Okay, so there's a lot of things that weren't stated, but the servant says, oh, you won't die. Elohim knows the moment that you eat, your eyes will be opened, and you'll be more like Elohim. Key point, you'll be more like Elohim, and you'll know good and evil like him. So all of a sudden, you know what happens? Interest rises. The tree looks pleasant to the eyes. It looks like she would be wiser if she followed this instruction. So think about that interest rising in you to know more, you know, to be more, to do more, and go past your limitations. So what happens, y'all know the story, she takes and she eats, and she oversteps her bounds. As I said, so much more happened than was actually written, but the serpent Deceive me, she says. It's too late. It's too late, Hawa, Eve. It's too late because there's a cause. There's an action, a reaction. You ate. You ate. So what was mentioned even on Shabbat was an arrogant mind, you know, and a woman not knowing her limitations, and that's true. Because a law, a law has been given to us now, and we all are coming into this law. It doesn't take too long being in this ministry to understand the law. You don't even have to know all the statutes quoted or know the verses and the chapters, but you know the order and the function of our Yah. But yet when the law is given, she, the woman, can still elevate herself above that law and, to, and decide to do her own will. So before I go to another temptation to paint this whole picture, Jennifer, you have any thoughts? You know, I, I, you said um, you said it right that a lot of women will paint their own will, and you know that does happen when you play ignorant. You know, almost like, and even Pastor mentioned this. You know, they'll look at you like they don't know what you're talking about, and it's definitely true. You know, we play the ignorant card while we try to force our own will, and then when it actually comes back comes back to bite us and judgment comes, you know, then that's when we want to play the, the whole ignorant thing. So I just wanted to point that out because he did mention that as well. Mother, any thoughts? Um, as he was talking about Eve, I often thought, I said, with her talking, that was too much information. All she was supposed to say, yay and nay, yay. Mm -hmm. He says okay. not to eat from the tree. Mm-hmm. She just gave too much information, and that's what happened with women. We give too much information, then we get way out there, and then we don't know how to get back to shore because we don't venture way out there and we get stuck. Very good. Get stuck. Very good. So this temptation got her, right? And we often we often reflect. It's easy to read it and to reflect on the serpent and to say, man, I've been deceived just like this, or the serpent, ah, oh, he's still like that. But to make it first person... And to go, I, 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 Eve, I'm guilty. This could be me. She was a deceiver as well. Mm -hmm. She deceived who? Her husband. Mm -hmm. Very important to reflect on that because it's not all him. It's not all the serpent. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's more subtle and had more guile than any beast of the field, Yah says. But it was your action. 
that cursed all uh, mankind, I could say womankind. So there's another, James 4 and 1, that was mentioned on Shabbat. That's another, um, <coughs> let's say, temptation. It's to speak not evil one of another. Mm-hmm. Just like don't go to that tree and eat of that fruit. Eat everywhere else. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. So here's James. Speak not evil one of another. Okay? It's just as important. Because now the evil is known. Knowledge of good and evil has been eaten, bitten of, and we got it. Born with it. Born in sin, shaping with iniquity. So speak not evil one of another. And Pastor reads Ecclesiasticus out of the Apocrypha 19.6. And in, in short, it says, He that rules his tongue lives without strife. If you hate babbling, you're going to have less evil. Don't rehearse what's told to you. Don't speak of others' lives. And please, without offense, don't reveal their lives. This is a tree to stay away from, right, Mother? Yeah. Stay away from it. Okay? So if you speak evil of your sister, you're judging. Right? If you're speaking evil of the law, and we hope tonight to, to even tell you what is speaking evil. Okay? Because some of us are afraid to say anything. And that doesn't need to be the case either. But let's move on. So if you speak evil of your sister, if you're judging her, and you are capable of speaking evil of the law. Now, the woman that wrote the letter that I read, she may come up various times, at least in my conversation tonight, because she had made herself a judger of the law, continually writing pastor and bugging him with scriptures that she believes supports her opinion of polygyny not being biblical, etc., trying to condemn the lifestyle, okay? But back to us women, not only as women have we learned the knowledge of good and evil, we have embraced it, and the power that it gives you to influence a man is just phenomenal. You can walk in such deception. We know this. So now that you know and have learned the knowledge of good and evil, you can what? Judge it. Mm-hmm. You can judge it. Because if you think you have made yourself like unto Elohim, you know what's good, you know what's evil, you can judge it, you can speak on it, you can elevate yourself above the law and make yourself like him. Who? Elohim. You see, that's what he does. He's the judge. So just like the serpent prophesied, you know, make yourself like Elohim. So James goes on to say, who are you that judges another? Your life is a vapor, and you somehow got time to judge the law. You should say whatever the master says, that's what we're going to do. But you rejoice and live in your boastings, and all this is evil. Jennifer, tell us, how do we rejoice in our boastings? We rejoice in our boastings when we um, actually think that our thoughts are valid, you know, that our ways are are actually higher than the Most High's ways. I I remember your testimony, Sister Ashley, and, you know, you were broken when the Father spoke to you and he said, my ways are higher. And a lot of times we, we just don't even get the fact that his ways are higher. So by taking pride in our own ways, you know, our own thoughts, our own opinions, um, even knowing that he tells us that his thoughts and his ways are higher, we still insist on inserting our own opinions and our own ideas. And they're not even wanted um, a lot of times because they conflict with the word of Yah. And when that happens, you're not even open to hearing his word because you've already made your thoughts and your ways an idol in your own life, in your own mind. Very good. And, Mother, he, I'm going to you. He used just an example of um, jumping out of an airplane, how so many people can tell you how, but they never did. Mm-hmm. You know, got so much to offer, but they never never did it, never saw it, never lived it. They climbed a rock mountain. Or or he gave the example of uh, you put on the gear and you ride a motorcycle, but that doesn't mean you're a driver. Um, so we express our opinions just so loosely. Like you said, you talk too much. You even talk to the serpent too much. Got yourself hooked. Couldn't go back. But um, what say you, rejoicing in your boastings or, or anything on your mind so far? Um, as as women, we love to talk. I mean, we 
as, as I always say, we, we want to have the last word. Mm -hmm. And that's why it gets us in trouble. But that last word, in our opinion, opinions, we are very opinionated people. And um, that's what's wrong. That's reading Christianity is so far off because it's my opinion, what I believe. And a lot of times we bring that on over into the Hebrew culture. And it's not our opinion. It's not what we believe. It's what the Word says. And we have to remember, just go by the Word. Just hold on to the Word. Because what we believe and what we thought it was, it wasn't true. We've been taught wrong from day one. And we've been brainwashed from day one. So we just have to undo everything that we've been taught. Very good. And I think about... Um, you know, he that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. Mm -hmm. And I think about how Pastor Joe Fox always honors pastor and has told us mm -hmm. openly that, you know, 11 times out of 10, everything I've disagreed about with pastor, he's always right. Mm -hmm. And you can tell he's a man with a, uh, it's ruling his tongue and living without strife because he's not expressing his beliefs to be different. It's not about, well, tit for tat, and I got to let him know, and let me tell mother what I don't like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like this about the community, you know, mm -hmm. they grass didn't get mowed, and we got to express, express, mm -hmm. when really, if you want to live without strife, you wait on it to get mowed, or you wait to know if you're right or wrong, and you hold it in, mm -hmm. and you just mm -hmm. take, you know, we don't mm -hmm. take stuff in stride, mm -hmm. we're very impatient and ready to move on. Ready to throw in the towel. Um, but I had an athletic friend. Her name was Sarah. And uh, she had her, you know, in my life for years. And she actually, she had rule over her spirit. This is this is an amazing woman right here. Uh, college. She wasn't, you know, you can't even hardly call yourself a woman in your early 20s because of the immaturity you still have in your mind. But nevertheless, a woman. And she ruled her spirit. She ruled her tongue. She, you know, ruled her body. Uh, she she never partied, okay, and, and I am going a little Christianity here because she was very moral, you know, but she, she always covered her body, she always smiled, she never drank, um, she never did drug, drugs or anything, and though she was tempted continuously, of course, not only because it's around you, but because of the mocking of people, just in their laughter and in their sin, mm -hmm. and you always observe such a righteous character about her that she was just uh, amazing to be around, but you couldn't force her to complain, you could not, it wouldn't matter what you talked about, you couldn't knock the smile off her face, and you couldn't make her express herself in the way that America uh, has made us do so. So she wasn't going to speak negative about anything or anyone, and she was what I would even now call a virtuous woman if she was to carry that demeanor mm -hmm. into this assembly. Uh, mm -hmm. Who can find her? You know, mm -hmm. who can find her? Um, but I marvel now because she met the conditions of virtue without the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. continually. And and so we all have him. We have him. I can't say all. Except maybe let's just put a percentage on it. Seventy percent of our listeners don't have him. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the truth we told. But what we have, we have a great failure to produce virtue. That's what we have amongst us, sisters, you know, and it's determined by Yah. It's not determined by me. Uh, and, and why would I say that? You know, why would I actually say that? Because I'm going here and I'm going to my my co-host here that our senses, you know, our hearing and our sight and our what we feel are in full mastery of, of rule over our bodies. So he that can rule his tongue lives without strife. We are being ruled and dominated by our senses. So what happens is evil spirits, their presence inside of you us can be hidden so well, hidden from mm -hmm. even our own knowledge, because his workings are, hey, he's sitting back carefully measuring mm -hmm. to suit the victim that he studied mm -hmm. so well, which is you, mm -hmm. and he's mastered this, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of years of observing mm -hmm. human nature, and ain't none of us knew. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may make a statement here, or a judgment here, judge this, express that, you may lie a little here. Uh, or refuse a chance to honor, mm -hmm. you know, show a little disrespect with your tongue, or you may tear down your husband uh, every once in a while. But all these little, little bitty things add up. He remains in the shadows. He remains in the shadows because you're not allowing him to be seen. You're not focusing on him. You're keeping him in the shadows. It's possible that you would even seek counsel of the wrong person. And, and that evil spirit stays buried. 
but your condition remains and your virtue is robbed and your senses still control you and you just continually live day after day and your tongue is loose it's still loose but you did you had one good day or a couple good days but uh i, I can't remember what pastor said one time he said uh who's gone who's gone 6 weeks without complaining or or 6 months with ju- just praising no you know, no negative speech. Whatever it was that he said was very impactful because it's like, why why are we elevating ourselves to be something when we hadn't made it seven days, Shabbat to Shabbat, mm. without allowing the enemy to use us and use our tongue so loosely? Uh, but what, what do you think, Sister Jennifer, about being dominated by our senses? You know, a woman who has strife in her life, um, if there's, you know, there's always something going on, there's always strife, there's always contention. If you just look at her manner of life, look at her speech, more than likely she does not rule her tongue because the word will not lie. And, you know, we allow our senses, our flesh to dominate, um, dictate, and control us. You know, the flesh, which is um, our feelings or what we see with the natural eye, what we hear with our natural ears, it's just not submitted to your spirit. So you think that you're hearing or seeing or uh, feeling righteousness, but you're not because it's not led by Yah. And when you're dominated by your senses, you're actually intolerant to change, you know, that Yah wants to bring. But it's really hypocritical because when you're in that uh, state of being, you dominated by your flesh, you are changing all the time, you know, because you're you're on the emotional roller coaster so that you um, you willingly experience that. So you refuse to change for Yah, but you allow your flesh to change you in wickedness, and it just creates a a level of instability. Yes, and I'm going to make this statement go to mother. When you have a a sense of holiness, and you know his order, but as she even said, you're a woman who may be full of strife, full of issues, Um, you have shame of sin, quote, right? Mm -hmm. But... What makes you continue in it is because you're not approaching Yah, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's no change because the sin Eve and and Adam had, Adam and Eve had, was uh, we now see ourselves naked. We're now shamed before him. So they didn't have the same approach anymore. There was not that connection that they had. There was an embarrassment. So that sin that we continue in and that strife will keep a separation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I just wanted you to speak on that, if you don't mind, the separation from Yah or the reason why we don't have change because of our shame of sin. Uh, A lot of it is pride also. Um, We would hate to recognize that we have missed the mark. And we think we're all right because we pitch, we we got a picture of ourselves, you know, that we are so holy and we're so righteous. But um, when we come to realize that we are, because the Father's going to show you you. Mm-hmm. I was sharing with someone this week, um, whatever sin that's in you and the Father keeps coming to you, showing you that sin, He's coming to you privately. Mm. So he's going to come a few times privately. And if you don't um, get delivered from it, everybody's going to know after a while because he's going to put you on full display. Right. And you don't want to be on full display (laughs) because that that, that, that spirit is going to come up and show out in front of everybody. And then you say, Oh, I didn't know Sister Blue Two was like that. I thought she was so holy and so righteous. I had no idea she had that spirit in her. Because we we don't want to change. We want to hold on to it, and we want everybody to think, you know, I, I I'm not a Jezebel. I I I I I don't I don't have no problems with believing me. You know, you you hide all that stuff. Because uh-huh. sooner some, or later. The Father's going to bring it up, and He's going to keep bringing it up until you get delivered. If you don't get delivered from it, He's going to just... Cut you off. Mm-hmm. Make you open shame. Open shame. Very good. 
And uh, I like that. Sister Jennifer, any thoughts on not approaching Yah not, or, or approaching him uh, correctly and not having any change because of, I mean, sin is a huge barrier between you and the Father because he's holy and his face turns from it. Um, but what do you think about just the shame that keeps you in your sin because you don't have that direct connection with the Father and you now have the embarrassment of continuing in a certain way? Uh, what say you? I think this is why it's so good to be in a yah fearing ministry because we we don't have excuses to just stay in sin because we you know we have um saints who are more mature and who are seasoned and you know they've been through the whole um you know uh, self accusation and condemnation uh thing and and they can they can actually teach everyone else how to get out of that and so I know that when I first came to the ministry, what really set me free after I had my first deliverance right there in, in the middle of, of Pastor Dow's living room was, you know, I remember Pastor and Mother Carol saying, you just need to talk back to the devil and you, you don't need to listen to these accusations. And, you know, I was really grateful to hear that because I had been condemning and con- um, condemning and accusing myself for so long. And I finally had the tool of deliverance, and I finally had the tool of knowing how to approach the Father, you know, really knowing, um, you know, my husband had taught me about repentance. And so it was amazing to be able to put all of it together, but this is why we need each other, because one person will give you one part, and then you can go to somebody else, and you can get another part, and it all comes together. But if we sisters continue to lack in love the way that we do, we're not going to trust one another to go to one another and, and share our struggles, and, and we won't be free as a result of it. Very good. So now you said talk back to the devil. you got to explain because uh, instead of expressing our opinions and how we feel, think, and believe by listening to the accusations that he presents to our mind, he's subtle, then we become deceiving by using his words through our speech. Tell me how I should be talking to the devil. You know, um, I think as women, it, it's very healthy to just get to the point of knowing when to shut your mouth. And, you know, there's times when you are ready to insert your opinion, um, especially if you're a wife, you're ready to insert your opinion on something that you have no business even sharing uh, your opinion on. Your husband has it all figured out, and he's telling you what the plan is. And you hear a voice that in your head, it sounds like your voice. And the voice in your head says, I don't think he's considered this part. I don't think he's, I don't really think he understands. And this is what the mind going and thinking that, well, I just need to tell him, no, you just need to be quiet, woman. That's all you need to do is be quiet and accept what the husband is doing and and back him in any way. So it's going to sound like it's your voice. But it's actually, you know, the devil trying to persuade you to persuade your husband. So you have to know when to tell the devil to to be quiet. No, I'm not saying that. You know, sometimes you just have to tell yourself, shut up. Um, Or sometimes put your hand over your mouth. And it might look funny, but it will save your soul. Very good. The word says honor and shame is in talk. Honor and shame is in talk. And the tongue of man is is his fall. Uh, so who is virtuous? That You know, that's what it says, Proverbs 31. Who can find? Who? I'm looking for someone who can find, not just a virtuous woman, but who's the one that's going to find her, right? So it's not the one, uh, if you're worried about being virtuous, daughters of Zion, because you've all felt we have all fallen prey to the enemy's voice, spoken his lies or accusations, agreed with him, uh, et cetera, et cetera, talk too much. Um, but it's about making the right changes and making them now. Uh, So it's not the one who is virtuous, the question is. It's not the one who never hears the serpent, because that's not possible, or the one who's never tempted, you know. uh, Jesus was tempted in all points. So that's not what it's meaning by, by being virtuous, but it's the one who has no intention to deceive with her words, no guile in her spirit. So there's no intention to deceive, okay? Jennifer, speak on that, please, and then mother, I see you. You know, when you look at Proverbs 31 and you read about the virtuous woman, um, you know, we just talked about one who rules uh, their tongue. 
and the virtuous woman will rule her tongue in righteousness. And it even says that she had the law of kindness on her tongue. So in order to have the law of kindness, you have to understand that you can't just say everything you feel. You can't be led by your emotions. You have to really know how to rule your own tongue. Um, like you said, Sister Ashley, it's the one with no guile, um, choosing not to use the wicked power uh, to deceive or influence um, our husbands in unrighteousness, the one who desires Yah's order and, and fully respects patriarchal rule. And if you truly respect patriarchal rule, all of the other things that I just named, you know, you'll automatically strive for that. Hallelujah. So it's the woman who has no intentions of deceiving, Mom. That's the virtue. But what say you? Um, a lot of thoughts will come to your mind, especially you having conversations with your husband or or just you just by yourself before. And um, I found I found I I do this. A lot of times things will come to my mind which ain't none of my business, and I say that's none of my business. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to tell them, girl, you just too nosy. That's none of your business. Mind your own business. Uh-huh. And, you know, you have to talk to yourself because if you don't, you know, you voice your opinion, you, say, you, need, you just need to be quiet, you know. Mm-hmm. Be mm-hmm. quiet, even though that, spirit, that voice is telling you, well, you can say this. No. Mm-mm. <laughs> You're itching to get in. Itching mm-hmm. to, to say, mm-hmm. wait till it gets to me, my turn. Mm-hmm. Can't wait till, till you shut up so I can say something. And and that's talking to the devil too, mm-hmm. you know, saying saying you just need to mind your own business. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna move on. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and amen. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. That's that's talking to the devil too. Mm-hmm. Um, but blessed is a man in whose spirit there is no guile, right? So what is she like? What's that woman like if she has no guile? Mm-hmm. Is it the woman who's a badgering pastor with verses mm-hmm. from the scripture, mm-hmm. trying to condemn a, a lifestyle? That is scripturally proven. Uh, but if you knew her, if we knew a, a virtuous woman, uh, I think we could all potentially be wrong. And I'll tell you why. Because we can't and we don't judge intentions the way that we believe ourselves to. You do develop maturity in it. You do develop discernment. You do get better at it. But if the majority of the state of the minds of the listeners and the immaturity that we're at right now you're not judging the intentions of what your sisters are saying. You're judging their tone and their attitude, their nature and their personality, and you don't like it, and you uh, uh-uh, you just go on about your business. You just keep your distance. Mm-hmm. So you speak evil of your sister, and you judge her, elevate yourself above her, and you know what you can do? You can take that to your husband, and you could influence him. You could influence him greatly. We're going to stick on that for a little bit because we're going to keep bringing that up because you're guilty, God is a Zion. But we can also get too religious with what to what to say. We can get so clammed up and so stiff that we don't want to say nothing because we believe everything's evil. And that's not a good balance, evil. So is it evil, Jennifer, to say, hey, she's, she's rebellious? Or is it evil to say, you know what, I don't want her to help me because she is lazy? Is it evil to say, her spirit ain't right? Why, you know, the brothers talk real. To each other, uh, from the pulpit to the least of them, they're just real beings. Sit with each other, get over stuff, talk it out, work it out. You see their love, and we over here worried about saying everything. Can't say nothing to her or about her, or if you say it to somebody, that person doesn't think you. Oh, I'm out of here. You gossiping? No, I'm just. I'm just stating the fact. She's not the one I signed to this job because she's lazy. Or et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I'm using that as an example because I haven't said that. But we're so afraid of expression that it, it keeps our minds rolling and thoughts continually going. Uh, so we don't want to go down the religious route. But the Father convicts you of your speech when your heart and your intention is to demean someone, to cut them down, to disrespect them, to lie, to misrepresent them. Uh, to deceive your listener, that's when the conviction comes into play. It's not It's not me saying, hey, uh, you know, Mother Bullock's pregnant. She's not. But it, you're just stating the facts. Let's not get too religious. She is pregnant. Hey, it is what it is. It's raining outside. 
I have branched that so much because there are, there's a huge drastic difference in our minds as sisters to where we have those who have no fear in expression. We have those who are uptight and religious and can't express nothing because they believe it to be sin. We have those that are meek and quiet, no guile, wouldn't speak anything. Huge variety of minds. So it's almost like we can't come together. We keep our distance because we keep so cliched and so divided. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we need to really understand each other more or better uh, and understand the body parts and the members that Christ has formed together. I can't tell the asshole how to function if I'm the, that's what my husband says, mm-hmm. if I'm the liver. Mm-hmm. Why? Don't, don't, judge, don't judge how that's going out. Um, so anyway, Sister Jennifer, what do you think about, about all that I've said? I think I just want to say first and foremost that, you know, quiet does not necessarily equate to meekness. Um, And I think sometimes we can have that mixed up. Um, You know, Pastor talks a lot about quiet riot. You know, you can have a riot going on inside quietly. Or when you're in the presence of other people, you can appear to be quiet. But you have a lot of um, just contention going on within yourself. And no, it's not to it's not wrong to call wickedness wickedness. It's really about the intent and the motive in your heart. If your intent is unrighteous and you expose someone else's wickedness and unrighteousness, then yes, you know, that that could not be righteous at all. And you know, the fruit of it will not the the good fruit will not come from it. But um it could also potentially be wicked to not correct another sister's wickedness because of, you know, fear of you being exposed in that same area. So you could have areas of compromise that you've neglected to take care of. So you stay silent when you see that um, compromise in someone else. So it's really about the intent of um, someone, you know, being able to speak up and speak out against wickedness. And again, quietness, does not necessarily equate to meekness. And um, one other thing that we have to know is that we are concrete people. You know, we're not abstract. And I think we we get it mixed up when um, us, when someone, especially a sister, calls out, when they speak concretely and they call out wickedness, um, you know, then it can be equated to something different. It can be equated to just, like you said, gossiping, and that's not the case at all. So we are concrete people, and we're not used to hearing people speak concretely. And, you know, that's one thing that I've learned in this ministry is speaking concretely so that there's no loopholes, there's no questions, there's nothing that will be left over to imagination. So speaking concretely is very important. That's one thing that I'm learning. Hallelujah. It is officially Yom Kippur. Let me blow the shofar for the blood and the atonement and the price that the Messiah has paid for our souls. Hallelujah. 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 All right. So, Mother, jumping back to you with how the Father can convict you in your speech. Uh, share anything personal, any of your experience or whatever to help us out, how he can convict you in your speech, what it should be like. Um, when you have the Holy Spirit, when you say something that's off, it, he convicts you. Now, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you won't be, be convicted, but he will convict you. You might not never say nothing to nobody, but he he to convict you, condemn you, and everything else. You have to repent and get yourself together. Uh-huh. I'm not going to say that no more. I'm going to mind my own business, you know. But um, when, you, when you say something or do something, if you have the Holy Spirit, it's going to convict you. Yes. He, it's the straight way. Yeah. He's going to keep you on that straight way. And, so, and then I wonder how can people continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over. Especially that, in tongue and speech. Yes. Especially. Especially. So that means they really don't have the Holy Spirit because he, he'll convict you. Mm-hmm. Or he's so grieved mm-hmm. you ain't hearing him mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. That's right. So using uh, Ecclesiastes 26.6 in the part of a, a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman mm-hmm. and a scourge of the tongue that communicates with all. Uh in in my opinion, that means to repeat the jealousy, right? What you're feeling, what you're hearing, what you got going on, that scourge of your tongue is going to express your jealousy. So jealousy is an example of an evil spirit staying in the shadows, 
staying in the shadows of, of your heart, like we expressed earlier in your senses, because that woman who wrote the letter, using her for an example, she's not going to have any conviction that says you're jealous, you know, deal with your jealousy. Uh, you're bitter over what this man has done to you. Deal with your jealousy. If she doesn't have the father, if she doesn't have a relationship, so she's going to continually try to penetrate, use the same uh, Christian verses that people use to try to tear down biblical marriage. But by your tongue, you can exalt yourself. And by speaking the negatives of all the other women and sisters to your husband, you can exalt yourself. You can uh, tear us all down, tear the ministry down, tear tear your home down, your man down, everyone, everything by your subtlety. Satan has an order, too. You know Yah's order. Yah, Jesus, man, woman, child. Satan's order is him, woman, child, man. That's how he works. I threw the child in there because we put our children over our husbands, potentially. Not Hebrews. But potentially. So man's at the bottom of the, he's the last priority in Satan's order. But you can't discern your jealousy because you discern the so-called evil of another. You're not, you're not looking at you. She messed up. She said it. She did it. And you share your view of that person or that sister with Adam. And you, you bite and he bites. And you got control behind the scenes. This actually happened to me. When it happened to me, um, it's a meaning a a couple had their mind influenced or you know influenced and changed according to me. Evil communication corrupts good manner, manners. It happened. I saw it. I went through it, and I immediately questioned myself: Have I done this? Because I, I usually go through trials not in a poor, pitiful me, but looking at it as: Am I reaping? Which we'll talk about in a minute too. Am I actually reaping something I've done? Because I can see that whatever she is saying is changing his heart towards me as well. Because now his behavior is different. And it's not because we have a relationship. He's married. I'm married. But because of the mannerism. So you can see uh, the control that we potentially have as women. So give me an example, Sister Jennifer, if you got one, of a conversation or example of a woman's conversation where she could have righteous intentions in speaking to her husband. Like, you and I, or whoever you want to use, if I need to speak to my husband concerning something with me and Jennifer, how can that potentially go wrong and me influence him, as opposed to how can it be maintained in righteousness so he can help me judge uh, a situation or act correctly? You know, you could um, you could have your own set of accusations um, within your heart. You could have in your mind the way that you think something is based on you perceiving from your natural eyes. You know, we talked about being uh, led by our senses, being controlled and dominated by our senses. And so going to your husband, you could say, you know, I just want to see if my heart is right. But Sister Ashley called me today, and she said that, you know, I just tend to talk a little bit too much on air. And I just, I, I couldn't believe that she said that. It sounds like she's really accusing me of, of, of just, being a chatterbox, you know, for lack of a better word. But I'm going to my husband and I'm telling him this could just be me, but. So it's like I'm setting the stage up for him to think that I'm being humble and I'm really not, instead of just coming out and just saying what, you know, what is actually on my heart. Now, um, you could be righteous in your intent, but sometimes we use too many words to kind of shield what really needs to be said. Or you could say, you know, Sister Ashley is a good sister, but she's just not seasoned enough. So, you know, every time you start with she's a good sister, but uh, she's a good sister, but she's got a lot to overcome from her past. Bless her heart. So you you sandwich it with these these good remarks, but you're really still accusing um, this sister in between, and you're hoping that it goes undetected. Very good. Mother, add to that. I was saying, but, <laughs> but <laughs> every time somebody come up, but sisters, all right, but okay, they they're not quite happy with sisters, you know. But I was thinking about something that happened to me years ago. It's been over mm, about thirty years ago because my son is twenty seven, so it's way before he was born. No, he was a baby, so it's somewhere in twenty seven years. And when I during the time I had been sit down mm-hmm. at the time. 
And then the, the my prayer partner at that time, she began to grow. And and I've never been jealous before. And a jealous spirit jumped on me. Mm-hmm. And she said something to me, and I snapped out. And I didn't know my pastor was Uh-oh. behind me. Uh-oh. And, and she said, and she said, you need to get rid of that bitter spirit. I'm going, okay. <laughs> no, I ain't got no bitterness in me. <laughs> spirit convict me. Yes, you do. Because you wouldn't have snapped at her if you didn't have bitterness in you. You're jealous of her. So I had to go and get myself together. And sometimes we don't realize that we are jealous of each other. When you see someone else favoring somebody else more than you, and that old man comes up, you know, that oh. Well, why is she favoring her? Why is Pastor talking about her so much? You know, that's uh, right. Mm-hmm. And then, then they get jealous. And, and you know, it's got got to be a I always get percentages, but I'm just giving guesses. You know, ninety percent of of all women, ninety nine, whatever, mm-hmm. deal with jealousy. So mm-hmm. when you come this way, you got to face it. Mm-hmm. it. It is what it is. Why is that such a um, such an issue, you know, we can we can all testify. Oh, rejection has just beat me down, and self hatred has just whooped me. Mm-hmm. But uh, what about your jealousy? You know, mm-hmm. well, ain't no ain't no difference in confession. Mm-hmm. It's just as important to getting free mm-hmm. and saying, "Hey, I'm dealing with this." Mm-hmm. You know, but that's that pride again. We'd rather deal with the poor, pitiful, mean mm-hmm. spirit, mm-hmm. the things that have been done unto mm-hmm. us. But mm-hmm. how I am, mm-hmm. now I ain't gonna go to that level. You know, mm-hmm. like Pastor said. Believe me, you're going to hold on to a little bit of you. When it comes to the Father, you're always going to hold on to a little bit of you. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that about me. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to hold on to a little bit of me. Um, but anyway, it's in us. So, all right. So this woman, right, seeking to, uh, let me see, write pastor letters. I keep using her. I don't know her. I'm just giving an example because it could be any of us. So this woman who writes pastor letters uh, continually, seeking to condemn how we believe, um, She's not going to face her jealousy, as I said. She's not going to face her bitterness. She's not going to to hold her tongue. Uh, So, Jennifer, what is her intent? And really, all she's doing is speaking up uh, for what many women would love to say, but maybe are too afraid. Uh, So she just got the balls to go there. But what what is her intention for writing these letters and, and, you know, opposing you know, this woman actually believes that she is right and that we are misguided. Um, she believes that her ways are higher than Yah's ways, even though she doesn't know that that's the way that she's walking. But she believes that her ways are higher. And there's many of us in this ministry who still thinks that way. And, you know, it, it sounds bad when you hear it um, being read through a letter. But when it actually comes to you and your heart is challenged, and the father really wants to know, um, you know, where you are with agreeing with patriarchal rule or where you are when it comes to agreeing with polygyny. You know, that's really when you get exposed and you get looked at. I mean, we can we can talk about these letters all day, but it's really things that are still in the hearts of um, the women that we actually need to get rid of. So, you know, there there is a motive there. But, you know, the father is using it to actually expose the motives in the heart of the women that are in uh, this ministry. It's true. And, Mother Bullock, with your experience in in churchianity and everywhere you've been, I'm sure you've dealt with many uh, people who may oppose uh, the pastors of the church or et cetera. But it's it's an interesting fight that we have going on here, especially with the the. Uh, how you say the boldness of women coming forth to fight against a uh, pastor and and there really is no fight, but at the same time, the letters that come that don 't stop that it 's really disrespectful um because our order is so different here mm-hmm. and and we need to stay out of the man of face mm-hmm. but nevertheless, give me uh why you think this woman would continually bug pastor or bombard him with scripture and believe or you know trying to tear down what we believe well the spirit of jealousy um i remember uh when um my pastor former pastor apostolic pastor she had said she taught strict holiness we didn't wear no 
makeup, no earrings. We didn't wear none of this stuff. And, and then she began to hit our spirit man. And she said, now, y'all need to get in here and pray and get yourselves together. I knew I was a mess. <laughs> so I, I, I listened to her. So I began to go up to the church and pray for 21 days, seven days a week. You know, except, yeah, except for uh, Sunday, I wouldn't do it. But six days, I was up at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was doing it. So the, the, the friend that had brought me to that church, she looked at me. She said, why are you doing that? I said, well, the pastor said that for us to pray. You know how to pray because she said, I'm looking at her like, this is your leader and this is my leader. I'm just being obedient. And what it was, she was jealous. She did not, she, because she brought me there, she thought I was supposed to follow her. And I said to myself, she done lost her mind. I kept running to the team to go up and pray. And I, as I grew, she ended up leaving the church. And then she ended up leaving the middle talking about the pastor. Because she wanted control. It's about control. That's really what it's about. Being able to control someone. They look at pastor and thinking that he's got control of all of us. We are zombies. Right. And they want to come in and try to. Unzombie us, <laughs> you know. They look. That's what. That's, that's what's the in truth. their mind, in their heart. Cause that's that's how they think. That's how they act. Uh -huh. And they just want the control. Cause they controlling women. They Jezebel women. And this woman to this day, she's in a nursing home now. But she never got settled in a church. Never got settled because she always wanted to come in and control everything. It's about control. And we've had that type of individual come through here that, you know, we're going to change how this is going. Mm -hmm. We're going to change mm -hmm. the community and how this is being said and that's being It never works. It never stands. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. But even, uh, you know, it's no it's no, no small thing, but the Father will bring you to the truth with mm -hmm. somebody and mm -hmm. cut them off. Yes, He will. He'll use yes, somebody he to get you here. He's yes, done. He did he it will. to me. Yes, he, every time. Hallelujah. It's a vehicle to get you there. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. So... So, uh, the woman, the woman's letter that we use just for an example, it's not, uh, it's not to be glorified. We're not minding her at all, you know. Uh, we get so many human nature phone calls. I said today to Grandma Barb, I'm like, I don't think I would have this uh, much uh, observation on human nature if I worked in human resources department in a, in a huge corporation. This is phenomenal. The amount of things that we get to see and experience and hear on the phone. Oh my gosh, I could, I could do show after show on just the phone calls I take. Um, but many have fallen by the edge of the sword, the word says, but not so many have fallen by the tongue. And I think more on not just the person that has the tongue that used it that, that has fallen. It's those who hear. It's those who hear that you could actually evilly affect or deceive with your speech. And so many men have been deceived by us. And it's, it's, it's sad. And so many men have fallen. Uh, I don't. I don't believe any man would be exempt. Our men are very different now and here in this faith. They're very strong, so their potential to be deceived is very small. Um, but nevertheless, depending upon your power of influence, you can still persuade his mind towards any anything, any situation. Uh, you can falsify, accuse. Uh, and still affect your man, your husband's mind, or a man's mind. Now, uh, you can t anybody can take your side of the story, it, or your husband can take your side of the story if you have the power of persuasion to make him think a certain way. So, uh, if you're saying, "Well, you're not thinking," to him, you're saying you're not thinking right, right? Or if you're not saying to yourself, "I could be lying," "I could be accusing," "What's my intentions?" There's got to be a direction, whether you're the speaker or the hearer. you got to continually stay in the fight and be diligent. So you need to fear the power of persuasion that we actually have. And the, the, the more you become uh, close in oneness with the Father, and especially with accepting patriarchal rule, the farther away you're going to be from the potential to persuade. But if you haven't accepted patriarchal rule, you're still very accustomed to influencing your husband. You're very accustomed to dominating him, period. So let your speech be short, the Apocrypha says. Comprehending much in few words and be as one that knows but holds his tongue. 
Be as one that knows but holds his tongue. You should be able to sit in a conversation that you believe you would even have an answer or some good advice for and still hold your tongue because it's not necessary or you haven't been given the opportunity or it's not the platform. It's just not not what needs to be said at the time. But, Jennifer, we need to reap more. I said it earlier in the show. We need to reap more. We need to experience our own doings upon our own head. Because it's coming around anyway. Mm-hmm. But in order to to reap more, sisters, daughters of Zion, it's going to make more fear in you. So don't be afraid of reaping. Because you, you need on this side of glory to get your soul right with the Father. And what 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 do you think about, Sister Jennifer? Does that make you fearful if I say we need to reap more? Actually, it does. Um, you know, I think about uh, Shabbat service when Pastor said, you know, I know how to get you all to change. All I need to do is act like you. And th- those words sound so simple. But when you really think about it, would I really want my husband to act like me? Our marriage would be a mess if he acted like me. So when you start there, you you start to realize the things that um, you need to change about you. And if we reaped more, you know, if we had um, more judgment, um, like the the quick judgment, you know, or that, that conviction in our hearts, if we just really paid attention to what the Holy Spirit was telling us to do and to not do, we would understand, we would have a holy fear, we would walk in, in more holy righteousness. I remember Mother Carol saying a while back, you know, wow, these people get away with so much, but the Holy Spirit would literally tear me up. There's no way that I would even be able to think about doing half of the things that, that these people do. And so, yes, we need to reap more, you know, and think about if if someone that's important in your life started acting like you, what type of relationship would you have? You know, that that really is an instant reaping situation because what type of relationship would you have? Would you like that? Would you like you if you were in a relationship with you? So that's something to really ask yourself, you know. Um, and I wanted to say, too, that the um, – I kind of lost my thought. I, I actually wanted to go back, if that's okay, Sister Ashley. It, it's you were talking about really, you know, accusations, and um, I, I wanted to bring up about you know how we can be so subtle um, in trying to influence our husband, um, trying to influence other sisters, and when you're subtle in um, in even accusing someone else to to try to change the view of uh, of your husband, you know, it's a way of delivering an accusation against someone with the hope that your intent will go undetected, but you still want to get your point across. And, you know, that can happen a lot with polygyny. It's, it's when that the whole but comes in, you know, like you, you could be talking to a group of sisters, you know, and you can say, I agree with polygyny, but you know, so when the butt comes along, then that means that you're about to insert your own opinion. And so you could you could say, I agree with polygyny, but you have to make sure that, um, you know, that the husband is just not wanting to fulfill his own lust. So you're bringing an accusation that, you know, polygyny, all men that are interested in polygyny only want to fulfill their own lust. And it might be a true statement that you, you might be saying, that, but it, it's really not your place to say that. So it needs to stop with, I agree with polygyny, period, and you let Yah handle the rest. So it, it really can be so subtle. Women are, are the best at being so subtle and so malicious, um, you know, without um, it even being detected. It's so true. And, Mother, you know, if we wanted to come on here weekly and justify ourselves or support our emotions and speak any old kind of way, we, we would have a damn good show. I've said that before. Mm-hmm. If I use my my uh, so-called personality skills and step outside the bounds that the Father has mm-hmm. given me mm-hmm. and just go there mm-hmm. and tell you all all about... Uh, you know, how, how good our, our our channel and our topics would suit so much. You know, we could talk about 
um, how hurt we've been mm-hmm. and what we've been through. You know, we have awesome uh, shows about single mothers who are just having such a hard time, and we can just complain about life and never talk about the father. Everybody listening now wouldn't be there, though, and you wouldn't be by my side. But it, it ain't the time to this, – this show ain't about expressing how much something hurt or what we had to go through because it's there. Emotions are very real. You might have had a, had a shitty day. You know, and it, and you going into Yom Kippur trying to glorify the Father, um, so it's real. That's what I'm trying to say. It's real. What you've done is real. The the damage you've done, the pain that you have caused, because we are Israel, mm-hmm. and we are deserving of death, but we're given life. We're deserve deserving of being forsook by the Father, mm-hmm. but He says He will remember us and engrave us on the palm of His hand. We're deserving of destruction. Right? But yet he gives us a chance to repent and to turn. So this show is never to condemn, but to expose the potential that we have. And the potential we have been given by the enemy is amazing. To use our senses to persuade each other or our husbands is very destructive, Mother. Yes, it is. Um, As women, um, we can, we are so slick and fly, and we fly under the radar. So I remember a preacher said one time, he said, you can find the best actors in church. Uh-huh. And it's true. Because people can look the part, act the part, but there's something on the inside that ain't right. And and they, and, and they, you know it in the conversation because they'll begin to talk very smooth and softly. That's why that butt will come out. But, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you say, okay, there it is. There she go. And you notice here, it's not it's not tolerated. Even if it was a few years, mm-hmm. you know, it's not it's not going to be tolerated long. The father really uh, separates the wheat from the tares mm-hmm. and does all the work here. Mm-hmm. And and that's a ministry you ain't going to find nowhere else. Because, mm-hmm. you, like you said, you can be slick and fly mm-hmm. in them churches and play the part mm-hmm. for as long as you want to mm-hmm. all your life. Mm-hmm. Do the moral thing. Yep. yep. Sign the roll and pay the bill and mm-hmm. pay the tithe. It don't. It don't cut it here. It don't. Mm-hmm. If you don't mm-hmm. change, if you don't get a real relationship with the father, uh uh-uh. uh, mm-hmm. ain't happening. So, let's say you ain't beautiful yet. Can I just add body. one thing, Sister Ashley? Yes. You know, you talked about what we are deserving of. You know how the father truly uh, bestowed his mercy upon us, but what we really are deserving of and. If you have a mentality of entitlement, you will never understand what you truly deserve, and you will never truly grasp the gift of salvation that Yah has given you. So um, I know we talk a lot about, you know, selfishness and entitlement, and if you have that mindset, you you truly won't understand um, how blessed you are that you weren't given what you deserve. We're worthy of death. But, you know, if if you believe that you're entitled entitled to life, you won't even understand uh, the love that the Father has for you. Amen. Anything, Mother? Nope. She says, go on. But as I said, you ain't beautiful yet, okay? You ain't holy yet, daughter of Zion. You ain't, you ain't blameless. We ain't blameless. Mm-hmm. We atone for it. We got the blood of Jesus. We cry out for it even today and tonight. Uh, but you don't know when something happens to you that you actually deserve it. It's a, that, it's a, that is a, um, as Pastor says, hard pill to swallow. What I mean is the pain, the tears, et cetera, that you go through, you deserve it. For our selfishness alone, mine, me chief, our selfishness, we deserve so much time for reflection, so much tears, pain, uh, whatever it takes to get us back to his ways and his mind, because as he said, my ways are not your ways. It is the truth. And you need, we need, you need to be knocked off your throne. You really do. The haughtiness, the pride, and the selfishness, you got to see it in yourself and just be literally disgusted at it. But you need to be knocked off your throne and come sit in the dust a while. Come on down and sit in the dust with some of, some of us that have been knocked off our throne and, and learn a little something, something. 
You know, come sit in the dust with some of the virtuous women, as, as Jennifer even said in the beginning of the show, just striving, you know, just striving to, to be perfected and be in this way and to be holy is just a precious thing. But uh, you need to be knocked off your throne. Jennifer, tell, tell the listeners what the dust feels like. No, it's that train wreck moment with, that um, destroys every single idol that you've relied upon for so long. Um, and you're forced to actually see yourself as Yah sees you. Um, and you, you make the choice to walk in true repentance. And I go back and, and I think about, you know, my own experience. I think about Sister Ashley's experience. Um, I think about Pastor's experience, how, you know, he said he called out every single sin out loud uh, in front of a, a, a group full of people, a church full of people. You know, it's that point when you're not ashamed of calling out every single sin so that your soul can be saved because you don't care. You just don't want to lose Yah. You don't want his presence to go away. And so it's that train wreck moment, and many have not even had the train wreck moment. You know, it's not even been anything to even be able to hit the dust. We don't even know what it's like to even be humbled to the point where you've been taken down from, you know, the throne that you've built and you've been put into the dusk. So once you know that and once you've experienced that, you know that, okay, that's I'm never going back there. I'll never go back to that place again. And you remember it because it's such a painful experience because you know who you are without Yah. But when you don't know who you are without him, you'll continue in your same wicked way. You'll continue to hold on to every bit of you that you can, and it'll get to a point where he'll allow you. But you know that that dust moment, the end of dust moment, is that that train wreck moment when you make a decision to live for him and not you anymore. That's right, and to do it and live for him and not your husband. It's so easy to mm-hmm. be riding on the on the coattails. Go ahead, mm-hmm. mother. But tell us what it feels like to be in the in the dust. Terrible. Terrible, she <laughs> said. Ain't supposed to feel good. No, huh? it it does not feel good. Um, I remember when he withdrew his presence from me for disobedience. It wasn't I had done something real bad. It's just walking in disobedience. Um, and he withdrew his presence from me, and that was I was so so miserable and I felt so empty and I turned this is almost black and that, that thing there because his presence mm-hmm. left me mm-hmm. and I, I and I and I and I had to fast and I had to pray and I repent I had to repent to the assembly I repent to the pastor I, I just put pride down I had to because mm-hmm. I, I had to get back to the father mm-hmm. call so, the sin out and, and call the sin out and I that's what I did and and I got back. I said, never will I allow that to happen again, to let the Father completely leave me like that, because it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's, what, it's not worth it. So mm-hmm. so you hear the experienced kids saying you don't, wanna, you don't want that train wreck. It's not happen, bound to happen because you need it. But, mm-hmm. but for the sins and the disobedience and the things mm-hmm. that we are in control of, you definitely don't want to experience that. But you may, you know, those, those, those moments where you're being knocked off your throne, it's going to feel like he ain't with you. Mm-hmm. It's going to feel like he ain't hearing you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know when you're ever going to rise again. Mm-hmm. You're going to face every Every kind of voice and feeling and sense and emotion that can't be explained. And, and you ain't going to get answers mm-hmm. until you just start to hush the voices mm-hmm. and follow him. Yes, so if you're barking orders, but you ain't taking them, uh, if you're comfortable daily without y'all on your mind, just, you know, do 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 forgot to think on him, forgot to think of him. Uh, you know, if you feel good every day about the condition you're in, Uh, and you're just being so dominated by your feelings that just because you feel good today, you woke up with some energy and you got some good sleep, uh, I'm telling you, deception, deception, um, it's it's not a good place to be in. So if you you think everything you said and done is justified, I'm telling you, you're not atoned for. You're not atoned for. So you need to repent. You need to repent for spitting in your husband's ears. You know, you need to repent for tearing down other women to your husband. You need to repent for loosely despising Yah's purity and polygyny. Uh, you need to repent for hating him because he's it's love or hate. There's no gray area. If you don't love it and embrace it, 
It's hate. And that's the way I deal with it. That's the way I talk to him. If you don't love it and you're trying to get there, may y'all help you. Um, but we forget too much. This is going to be a good little, this is all I got for the for the last of the show. But I know we can kill some minutes right here, Mother. I'm going to go to you first. Because we, we forget a lot of what we have said loosely. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd like to just proclaim, because I know we got the same Holy Ghost, that he's a reminder. He's a reminder of your sins. He's a reminder of what you said and did. And if you seek him, he's going to remind you. And so I'd just like to hear your thoughts on that as people, you know, you, you don't want to have the the fear that, oh, man, I've said said so much and done so much, I can't remember it all. Don't worry. Right? Because we got the Holy Spirit. Talk to us. He would bring all things back to your remembrance. <laughs> right. Because a lot of times we say, I don't, yes, he would bring it back to you. And the, the least time that you're even thinking about anything and you think you're on your way, to the glory land, and here he comes and bring it back. He said, oh, my goodness, I need to <laughs> repent of that. You know, he'll bring it back, I mean, he will bring it back and repent and change. And that's the whole thing. We don't want to change. I don't know why. I don't know why we want to keep our little pet, keep us up. pet demons. Yeah, <laughs> waiting on everybody else to change first. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't understand how we can't, we just conversating now, daughter design, but how, Jennifer, we can't, see that we haven't grown. Like if I'm if I'm somebody that I know I have not grown in this area, this is an issue. Mm-hmm. I know that I have not grown in my relationship with the Father or et cetera, et cetera. Why are we not embracing with this passivity mm-hmm. to the core? But why, Jennifer, are we not acknowledging the state that we're in and being deceived to believe that we are acknowledging it? That's the thing. But why are we believing that we're we're making changes? You know, part of it is um, just the discernment, not having the discernment, not having the true love for the Father, believing that there's gray areas, like you said, um, not understanding that, okay, it's either either love or hate. So, like you said, we forget too much. And, you know, a lot of times the Father can bring that back to your memory, and he will remind you, but instead of taking it to repent, we call it the devil. Oh, this is just condemnation. This is the devil trying to condemn me. No, it's Yah trying to speak to you and tell you that this is something that you need to repent of. And so there could be several times when you just reject. You continue to reject because, you know, in your eyes, it's just too hard to change. It's just too painful. But it's even more work holding on to the old man. And so when you hold on to the old man, you just, you don't change. You don't grow. And you repeat the same things over and over again. Talk to us, Mother. As Sister Jennifer was talking about, I think the big problem is they don't recognize the voice of the Father. Um, Because you have the Father speaking, you speaking, and the devil speaking. And if you don't know how to discern between between those voices, you, you accuse the Father of especially when he's trying to pull you into where you need to be and he's showing you you. And you say, oh, no, that's the devil. I rebuke that spirit. That spirit. No, that's the Father trying to show you and bring you in, showing you you. You know, you don't rebuke nothing. You And you get in trouble rebuking the Father and thinking that you, you, you know, you're righteous and you're not. Because he show you you. You go in prayer, he ain't going to show nobody but you. You go faster, he ain't going to show nobody but you. It's going to be you. It's all about you. <laughs> and we try to pass the buck, and it's not about passing the buck. And we got to start rebuking. Uh, <laughs> the uh, spirit comes and I was bitter. Okay? Yes, you are. You're a bitter. A spirit says that I'm walking in witchcraft. Oh, I, I rebuke that spirit. <laughs> Yes, Father, trying to show you, you, yes. you know. Yes. Oh God, I have a Jezebel spirit that's deep down on the inside. It's you. It's not your sister. If Jezebel pop up in your spirit, it's you. Very good. And mm-hmm. deep, deep reflection is going to allow you to, to mm-hmm. see it in mm-hmm. you. It ain't gonna mm-hmm. take rocket mm-hmm. science. Mm-hmm. It really ain't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's gonna bring up 
what you just did, what you just said. Mm-hmm. He's going to bring up those times because mm-hmm. uh, he's trying to purify you, mm-hmm. chastise you. Mm-hmm. Right, Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. Very true. It's um, And this is where, you know, living tribally, living community, communally comes in, um, having one another because, you know, you can um, be sharpened with other sisters. But, again, you know, like Sister Ashley said, we – we try to hide because we know uh, the nature of a woman. You know, we can't deceive each other because we know each other way too well. But this is where the trust comes in so that we can be sharpened, so that we can understand, um, you know, that we can be vulnerable and that we can actually strive toward righteousness because, okay, if I'm interacting with Sister Ashley, she knows, she knows what my weak areas are. She knows what my strengths are, too. And I have no problem at all being vulnerable when I'm speaking with Sister Ashley. And this is the type of, of love that we have to have for one another, you know, instead of always being so critical, having a critical eye. If I tell her this, she's just going to shoot me down. She's going to reject me. And, you know, I just need to keep this to myself. Don't tell anybody. Well, you'll never get better. So, you know, you can keep it between you and Yah, but I'm telling you, he, we have each other for a reason. There's a reason that he's called us to live um, as communal people, to live as a tribe. You know, he hasn't called us to live apart or alone because you don't grow that way. And the devil, all he wants to do is to get you by yourself so that he can continue to speak into your ear about how you don't need Yah's people. You know, you're just fine by yourself. You don't need to change all this. And he'll slowly and subtly convince you that you're okay by yourself. It's true. You need to have. Uh, um, you need to be able to see something good about every one of us that's striving. Mm-hmm. Now, if somebody's not striving, I'm not asking you to to find something good about her. Um, but you need to be able to make sure you're not accusing your sister and and really reflect on the good, so that you are not dominated by the enemy who attacks you about her. If that makes sense. So we can have relationships that are really provoking one another to righteousness because if your reflections are on the good of the people around you, you're not bothered by the by anything you so called see. And what happens is after potentially a long time of you uh not reflecting on that anymore, it dissipates. It's no longer an issue. You're not bothered by anyone else. It's all about you, you, you. So we have relationships of vulnerability building up. I praise the Father for it. And we want to be provoked by one another's righteousness and not be um, focused on the negative to the point of jealousy or persuading our husbands a certain way. Okay? That's very important. Don't go to your husband, daughter of Zion, about any one of us with a wrong intent. You heard it. We talked it. We exposed it tonight. It's potentially there. It's very damaging, mm-hmm. and you stand in judgment for it. Mm-hmm. So um, don't do it, all right? And, and 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 really seek your intention. The Father, if you have a relationship with him, he'll let you know your intention, okay? He will, and, and you'll get it right. So be encouraged. Um, Mother, anything else? I'm, I'm out of words. She says me too. This, this could be. My last show, da, da, da. y'all are like, you've been saying that for weeks, Ashley. Hey, I got to say it. I don't know when my last week is uh, until, right, da, 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 until I come back. Mm-hmm. So whether male child, female child, we go by the purification laws in Leviticus 12. I always say that. It could be Leviticus 14. But um, it gives me the days that I obey to stay in, to be purified in body. So next week our show is canceled. Um, this week you heard me, and the week after that, I believe I'll have Mother Carol come on. If I'm still, uh, if I'm still on the show, she's still coming on with me. So she already knows she's committed, and she'll be taking over either from that point or when I, whenever I do have Deacon's third child. Um, I love y'all. I bless y'all. I'll try to keep you uh, tuned in with uh, my videos, at least on the Help Me's channel. For, for the feast and some of the things that we do, I'll try. You know, you get to see the kitchen, Sister Sakina. Um, I don't know. What, what say you, Sister Jennifer? You about ready to take the horn over? Well, I I have to say that, you know, it, it's always um, a pleasure just being able to co-host with you. And I'm excited about the addition to uh, Deacon's home and the... I'm mean, also excited about an opportunity for uh, just another home birth and to be able to testify once more to the goodness of the Most High Yah. Um, but I'm also excited about Mother 
uh, Mother Carol coming on the broadcast with me and um, just being able to um, to share with the daughters of Zion as well, just on a, on a whole other dimension. Um, I even um, heard pastors say that possibly Mama Nelly will come on as well, so I'm excited about that. Um, so it's just a, another area to be able to grow and um, just more information that we'll be able to get you all, even though we will miss Sister Ashley. So that's all I wanted to say. Hallelujah. So true. Let's give a few more minutes. Okay, we're wrapping up. We're winding down. We have nothing else to say. Uh, it's Yom Kippur. We bless his holy name. Keep that ever before in your mind. You know that the uh, – uh, please call in. I'm rambling, so you can call in if you need us. Guests call in, 515 602 Nine zero five four. Forgive me. Nine six five four. Thank you. Had to get up. Couldn't see with my glasses. Nine six five four. You got to press one if you want to talk to us. Uh, we'll give just a few more minutes. But Yom Kippur, we don't drink water and we don't eat twenty four hours. And I did a video today explaining if you're nursing or pregnant, please rely upon your husband's instructions. If he wants you to consume anything, it's something that we don't. And children as young as three here. Uh, have and are fasting, um, and then, of course, no condemnation if they're three and not fasting, okay? So just get yourselves ready year by year to partake in this custom with us. Any phone calls? No phone calls yet. Let's go to ministry break. If I don't have anything, when we come back, we'll conclude the show. Hold tight. Bless you, Canada Saints. Shalom, Sister Wenda. Hold on. Shalom. This is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor... Your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Charles Dowell, Jr. And Dowell is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. 506 Ellington Drive. Ellington is spelled E-L-L-I-N-G. T-O-N, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, and Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E, 37083. Again, our mailing address is Charles Dowell, Jr., 506 Ellington Drive, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. That's 1-615-688-3025. You may leave a message there, and, be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to try to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. Please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ just like we all are. Shalom. The king is coming. Hallelujah. We had one call, but it dropped off. I don't, oh, there it comes again. Uh, potentially Mother Bullock's last show with me for a while as well. So I have to say thank you to her for being here every week. And let's jump over to this phone call. Area code 281. You are live on Sister to Sister. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, bless your mother, Sister Ashley, Mother Jennifer, bless your sister Nastasha. Can you hear me? Shalom, bless you, what you got? Shalom. Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to thank y'all. I just kind of been calling in so much, as y'all have heard. I need y'all. Y'all are my sisters, y'all are my mothers, and I just wanted to thank the Most High for y'all. Thank the Most High for this ministry. Ashley, I remember you said one time this ministry is a miracle, and I truly believe that. And I wonder um, if it's okay to 
a few um, scriptures from Proverbs 24 that have uh, just been on my heart from this ministry. Go ahead and share with us. And you you got a little um, choppy, like you went in and out. So stay in a good spot and share what you got. Okay, I'm trying to. Sorry. Is, is that okay? Yes, ma'am. I hear your phone. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's in the background. I apologize. It's my grandfather's phone. Okay. I just want to make this stuff ringing. Through 5 and then verse 10. Um, okay. Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. And then verse 10 says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. And so I'm dealing with all I'm dealing with, with natural family in this transition of this journey, all the beaks, all wisdom, and all relationships of this ministry, I'm just very thankful because uh, it's helping me be stronger, it's helping me be wiser, it's helping me get even closer to the Most High and the relationship of my husband, who is Yahweh. So I just thank you all so much, and I'm just very grateful for this ministry. Hallelujah. One thing is for sure, we all uh, we all know by now this is family, and, and we know that natural family is, is nothing but some similar blood and DNA. That's it. <laughs> We got a good thing going on. Bless you, Sister Natasha. Bless you. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom. All right. No more phone calls. Bless y'all if it's the last time you hear my voice. And if not, you'll hear it again. And you'll see me again on the videos. I do it for you. Uh, Bless you, Sister Jennifer, Mother Bullock. Anything anything from Mother. Mother bid you shalom and send her love. Sister Jennifer, what about you? I just show. wanted to thank Mother Bullock as well for um, being on the, the, the broadcast with us. We always have really good dialogue. It's um, it's always good just being able to conversate and go back and forth. So thank you, Mother Bullock, for taking the time out and just for sharing your time to actually teach us Daughters of Zion. So I just want to um, read from Ecclesiasticus uh, one last time, 19, verse 6. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife, and he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. Shalom, daughters of Zion. Blessings. Bless you. See you tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Shalom, shalom. And thank you, Dr. William Luck, for honoring the legendary Pastor Dow, the man we follow without shame. Shalom, shalom. The king is coming. And Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I am going to make a helper for him as his counterpart. Holy Yahweh Almighty, we're singing. Holy, Holy 